The world of Claymore, a dark fantasy series, is strangely beautiful. It boasts forests, mountains, hills, and oceans. It is vaguely divided into five regions, all of which have their own history. Today, I'll be your tour guide for this captivating world, showing you everything Claymore has to offer. First, however, I need to say that spoilers lie ahead. The first thing you should know about Claymore's world is that it is an island. This island is only a grain of sand in a much larger and terrible world. In this larger world, two factions engage in bloody conflict. On one side are monstrous humanoids known as the Dragon's Kin. These Dragon's Kin are also called the Aserakam, which means empty in the Pali language. They have lifespans of over 200 years and are covered in inhuman claws, gills, and scales. On the other side of the war are a faction of warriors and scientists responsible for the organization of the series. These experimenters created both Yoma and Claymores by fusing the flesh of the dragon's kin with humans. It is possible these were the attempts of the organization to develop a super weapon against the dragon's kin, creating new monsters to destroy the old ones. It could be that the dragon's kin were the original inhabitants of the world and that a new human race the forefathers of the organization, now looks to take over. Many questions about this larger world are unanswered. Still, since we only have limited information about the true world of Claymore, the rest of the video will mostly explore the island on which the series takes place. The island world of Claymore is composed of 47 districts, each located in one of five regions. Let us first turn to the northernmost region of Alphonse. Alphonse is a land of cold mountains, hills, and volcanoes. It spans snowy villages like Pieta and Dabi, where people lead simple lives while fighting the elements. The name Alphonse is derived from the Czech painter Alphonse Mucha from the 20th century. Norihiro Yagi indeed names many of Claymore's regions after artists, perhaps implying that world building is an art of itself. In the heart of Alphonse lies a dormant volcano, a symbol of the region's volatile nature. Alphonse is the frozen stronghold of Isli of the North. Isli was one of the Abyssal Ones, an original male Claymore. During the Northern Campaign, Isli's army clashed with the Claymores sent to stop them. The battles that ensued ravaged the land, leaving the population either dead or forced to flee. The awakened beings, unleashed by Isli, claimed the remnants of Alphonse as their own. In the aftermath, Alphonse was abandoned, left to the mercy of the monsters that now roamed its desolate landscape. South of Alphonse, we find Souteré, the eastern region of the island. Souteré is a desolate wasteland dominated by rocky deserts and forests. It holds the headquarters of the organization, located in an unnamed town close to the sea. Despite the barren surroundings, Souteré is not devoid of life. Other towns and forested areas exist within the region. In one of these towns, Rafaela learns about the organization acquiring identical twins, and later encounters a young trainee named Teresa in the outskirts of the town. Next, we turn to the center region, Toulouse. The name Toulouse was inspired by the French post-impressionist painter, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec. It is a land of lush green lands and picturesque valleys. It is in Toulouse that the holy city of Rabona finds its home, encircled by towering stone fortifications on every side. At Rabona's heart lies a grand cathedral, likely inspired by the Gothic architecture of medieval France. The bustling streets of Rabona are adorned with a vibrant marketplace, teeming with activity and offering a wide array of goods. Additionally, the city boasts opulent inns, providing luxurious accommodations for its visitors. Toulouse serves as the primary base for the majority of Claymores, including the formidable top three warriors. This strategic placement allows them to swiftly respond and mobilize to any quadrant across the island when needed, ensuring the defense and balance of power. West of Toulouse is the region Lautrec. Lautrec is made of lush green valleys, majestic mountains, and sprawling deserts. Doga, a town located in West Lautrec, serves as the starting point for the Claymore series, where the young Rocky encounters the enigmatic warrior Claire. As their journey unfolds, they venture to the other towns of Stora, Egon, and Shire. One town, Hanel, houses a statue of twin goddesses resembling Teresa and Claire. 
Not far away stands Mount Zakel, serving as the headquarters known as the Witch's Maw for Reful. Reful is the abyssal one who rules the west of Claymore's island world. Finally, we look south to the region of Mucha. Like Toulouse, it is a land of fertile valleys, hills, and plains. The abyssal one named Luciella rules this southern region of the island. When Isli, the northern abyssal one, first steps into the region, he remarks how pleasing the southern climate is. With Mucha, our tour of the Claymore world finally ends. While writing this video, one thing I've realized is how badly I want a reboot of the Claymore anime. A reboot of Claymore would greatly contribute to the development of its rich medieval world by delving deeper into the broader conflicts that shape it. The series offers a compelling narrative centered around half-human, half-demon warriors who battle against powerful creatures. By exploring the intricate political struggles, power dynamics, and underlying mysteries of the world, a reboot can provide a more comprehensive understanding of its complex tapestry. Visualizing the distinct features of each region, such as lush forests, sprawling cities, desolate wastelands, and treacherous mountains, would enhance the immersive experience and showcase the diversity within the world. Furthermore, honoring Norihiro Yagi's distinctive art style, known for its detailed character designs and atmospheric settings, would not only pay homage to the original work, but also captivate both new and existing fans. Drawing inspiration from the success of medieval anime like Berserk would also help the reboot garner attention and generate enthusiasm, leveraging the appeal of the genre and its passionate fan base to bring Claymore back to the forefront of the anime industry. In the end, the Claymore series only scratches the surface of a much larger and more ancient world. It is fascinating how even the most powerful of beings, like Teresa and the Abyssal Ones, are pawns in a larger war. Thanks for watching. I'll be posting some deeper theories on the Claymore world in the future, so please subscribe to get notified. See you guys.